Hi everyone. This is a session on classification of carbohydrates and simple carbohydrates. In this session, I will be first defining a carbohydrate and then we'll be learning about the various types of carbohydrates. And in the course of this discussion, I will also tell you the biochemical basis of a clinical condition, which is lactose intolerance. And because these days image-based questions are often asked, I will also guide you in identifying a disaccharide given a structure. So these are the objectives of the session. Let's begin the session with definition of carbohydrates. And I feel instead of me just telling you the definition of carbohydrate and you, you just uh, memorizing it, it will be easier for you to remember it if you try to derive the definition of the same by looking at these two structures. I've shown you structure of glucose on one hand and structure of fructose on the other hand. The good news is you don't have to memorize any of these structures. Just observe these two structures and tell me one similarity between the two and one difference between the two. Yeah, other than both having uh, six carbon atoms, anything just strikingly similar. Do you see that both glucose and fructose have multiple hydroxyl groups? So this is a property which is common for any carbohydrate. So all carbohydrates have multiple hydroxyl groups. The difference is, do you see that glucose has got an aldehyde group as a functional group? What is the functional group that is present in glucose? It's an aldehyde group, whereas fructose has got a ketone group. And this is why you define all carbohydrates. Every carbohydrate is defined as polyhydroxy because they are bound to have multiple hydroxyl groups. They are polyhydroxy, aldoses or ketoses. Having the general molecular formula CNH2NON. Do you see that here? What will be the general molecular formula of all carbohydrates? CNH2NON. Or on hydrolysis, they, get, they give rise to molecules of molecular formula CNH2NON. So that's all about definition of carbohydrates. Now, how do we classify these carbohydrates? These carbohydrates are of two types. One is simple carbohydrate, the other one is complex carbohydrate. So tell me what are the two types of carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. The name by itself tells you everything. What are simple carbohydrates? They have only carbohydrate units in them. Yeah, simple carbohydrates have only carbohydrate units in them. Whereas complex carbohydrates in addition to carbohydrate units have either lipids or proteins attached. Do you understand the difference? Simple carbohydrates have only carbohydrate units in them. Whereas complex carbohydrates in addition have either lipids or proteins attached. In that case, what do you think are the types of complex carbohydrates? If a carbohydrate is attached to a lipid, can you call it as a glycolipid? So what is one type of complex carbohydrate? It is glycolipid. If a carbohydrate is attached to a protein, can you call it as a glycoprotein or as proteoglycan? So tell me what are the three types of complex carbohydrates? Glycolipids, glycoproteins and proteoglycans. Do you understand this? The three types of complex carbohydrates are glycolipids, glycoproteins and proteoglycans. And we will be discussing about complex carbohydrates a little later in a different video. In this video, we will be discussing about simple carbohydrates. These simple carbohydrates are getting further classified depending upon the number of carbohydrate units they have as monosaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. So what are the three types of simple carbohydrates? Monosaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. As the name indicates, what do you think is a monosaccharide? Monosaccharides have only one sugar unit. Whereas oligosaccharides have from 2 till 10 units. Please remember this. Disaccharide is also a type of oligosaccharide. Okay, monosaccharides have one sugar residue. Oligosaccharides have from 2 till 10 residues. 
So what are polysaccharides? Polysaccharides have 11 or more number of units. Okay. So that's about how we classify simple carbohydrates. So now let's learn about monosaccharides. There are two ways in which you can classify a monosaccharide. The first way is depending upon the number of carbon atoms they have. Yeah, the first way of classifying monosaccharides is depending upon the number of carbon atoms they have. Second way is they can be classified based on the functional group that is present. So, what are the two ways in which you can classify monosaccharides? First is based on the number of carbon atoms. Second is based on the functional group that is present. Depending upon the number of carbon atoms they have, just think logically. If it's a monosaccharide which has got three carbon atoms, you will call it as a triose. Yeah, if a monosaccharide has got three carbon atoms, you will call it as a triose. If it has got four carbon atoms, you will call it as a tetrose. Five carbon atoms, pentose, six carbon atoms, hexose and so on. So, depending upon the number of carbon atoms present, you classify monosaccharides as trioses, tetroses, pentoses, hexoses and so on. Now, depending upon the functional group, how do we classify monosaccharides? If there is aldehyde group as the functional group, then you will call it as an aldose. If it's a ketone group, you will call it as a ketose. So, what are the two types based on the functional group that is present? It is as aldoses and ketoses. If you find it difficult to understand this classification, I am going to make it easier by giving you again the same two examples. Yeah, glucose and fructose. Okay, now observe glucose first. In glucose, how many functional groups do you find? A carbohydrate can have either an aldehyde group. A carbohydrate can have either an aldehyde group or a ketone group as the functional group. That way, how many functional groups do you find in glucose? There is only one functional group, which means glucose has got only one sugar residue. If a carbohydrate has got only one sugar residue, it means it is a monosaccharide. Yeah, it means it is a monosaccharide. So, your glucose is a monosaccharide. And what is that functional group which is present? The functional group is an aldehyde group, which means your glucose is an aldose. How many carbon atoms do you find in glucose? Yeah, six carbon atoms, which means it is a hexose. Do you understand this? So, glucose is a monosaccharide. It is an aldose. It is a hexose. Now, look at fructose. In fructose, how many functional groups do you observe? There is again only one functional group, which means your fructose is also a monosaccharide. And what is the functional group that is present? It is a ketone group, which means it is a ketose. And how many carbon atoms do you find in fructose? There are six carbon atoms, which means your fructose is a hexose. So, what is the carry home message here? The carry home message here is both glucose and fructose are monosaccharides. Both glucose and fructose are hexoses. But the difference is glucose has got an aldehyde group as a functional group. Fructose has got a ketone group as a functional group. So, both glucose and fructose are functional isomers. Why am I calling them as isomers? Because they have the same molecular formula of C6H12O6. The only difference is glucose has got an aldehyde group and fructose has got a ketone group. So, glucose and fructose are functional isomers. I hope you are clear about classification of monosaccharides. Depending upon the number of carbon atoms, you classify them as trioses, tetroses, pentoses and so on. And depending upon the functional group that is present, you classify them as aldoses and ketoses. And in this classification of monosaccharides, I want you to remember two facts. One fact is about a misnomer. The misnomer is maltotriose. Yeah, what is the misnomer here? The misnomer here is maltotriose. What is a triose I told you? 
Yeah, triose, I told you, is a monosaccharide with three carbon atoms. Didn't I tell you? Triose is supposed to be a monosaccharide with three carbon atoms. Now, what is maltotriose? It is a trisaccharide with three glucose residues. Maltotriose is a trisaccharide with three glucose residues. When I say there are three glucose residues, how many carbon atoms will you find? 3 into 6 is 18 carbon atoms. Yeah, how many carbon atoms will you find? 18 carbon atoms. So, don't you think it's a misnomer? Yes, right? So, maltotriose is not a triose. It's a trisaccharide. It's a misnomer. It has got 18 carbon atoms. And the next fact which I want you all to understand here is, if you see the term malt in a name, yeah, if you see the term malt in a name, it means it has got multiple glucose residues. For example, maltose is made up of two glucose residues. Isomaltose is also made up of two glucose residues. Maltotriose is made up of three glucose residues. So, malt means multiple glucose residues. It cannot have anything else but glucose. Okay, so that's about a misnomer. Suppose they ask you, all of the following are trioses except. If one of the choices happens to be maltotriose, now you know that is the answer because you know maltotriose is not a triose. And the next fact that you should know about this classification is, how do you name a ketose from the corresponding aldose name? Yeah, how do you name a ketose from the corresponding aldose name? I will give you a clue. Erythrose is an aldose. Okay, erythrose is an aldose, whereas erythrulose is a ketose. Ribose is an aldose, ribulose is a ketose. Pseudoheptose is an aldose, pseudoheptulose is a ketose. So, how do you name a ketose from the corresponding aldose name? By adding UL. Suppose they ask you, all of the following are aldoses except, yeah, if it's an MCQ, wherein you asked, all of the following are aldoses except. And if one of the choices has got UL in its name, now you know it is not an aldose, it is a ketose. Clear? So that's about classification of monosaccharides. Now let's try to discuss about oligosaccharides. Nothing much to discuss about oligosaccharides. Except for the fact that one of the types of oligosaccharides is disaccharide. So, as far as disaccharides are concerned, you will have to know two facts about the commonly asked five disaccharides. What are those two facts? Yeah, for example, if I ask you about sucrose, you should tell me that sucrose is made up of what? You should tell me that sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose. So, what is the first fact you should know? You should know what are the individual sugars which are present in a disaccharide. And that's not enough. You should also tell me what is the linkage which links these two sugars. So, one is the two sugars which are present. Second fact is what is the linkage that is present. So, if you fill up this tabular column, then you will know every fact related to a disaccharide. <laughs>